Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on Form 2 Chemistry. And our topic for the day is the structure of the atom and the periodic table. So today we are going to focus our attention on the atom. So we will start by discussing the atomic theory or some of the theories that were studied on the atom and also the scientists who are responsible for that. That is going to lead to the development of the atom. So, and then we are going to look at the structure of the atom that is a modern atom. And then finally, we are going to do a few questions and practice on what you're going to discuss. So first, let's start with the earliest scientists to discover the atom. So we have Democritus, who was uh, in discover. He was a Greek philosopher. He discovered um, the atom, and he talked about the atom uh, being indestructible. That if you cut the uh, atom or atomos, which he referred to as atomos, it was uncutable. Even if you cut it into smaller and smaller pieces, it's going to remain to be the same um, atom. And he said that atoms are the small, smallest possible particle in matter and different types of atoms for each material. <clears throat> so each material had different types of atoms. Uh, and then after that came John Dalton. So John Dalton talked about matter being made up of atoms and atoms of one element were all the same and atoms could not be broken into smaller parts. So if you took an atom and you broke it, you cannot be able to break this atom into smaller pieces. And also uh, compounds were formed by combining different types of atoms. And for him, he thought or envisioned atoms to be like hard spears uh, or some wooden balls. For example, the ones that are used on the pool table. That's how we thought the atoms looked like. Then came Justin, John J.J. Thompson. J.J. Uh, Thompson talked about the electron. He discovered the electron. He was the first person to show that there were smaller than the atom and these uh, smaller things were negatively charged so he's the one who talked about the electron being negatively charged and he stated that the atom had a sphere which contained both positive charge charged particles and negatively charged particles and he saw that the atom looked like a plum pudding where it had the negative charges and the positive charges surrounding it. It looked like uh, plums in a pudding. And he said that the positive um, and the negative charges were in equal magnitude. That is the reason why the whole atom had no charge. So he referred to the atom to be electrically neutral. You see some of these concepts are used even in today's atom. And then finally, um, as we move on, there was Ernest Rutherford. So Ernest Rutherford uh, said that atom is mainly made of empty spaces and there was like a dense center with a positive charge. He was the first person to discover the nucleus. And for him, the nucleus contained some positive charges and these electrons which are negatively charged which were initially discovered by the by jj thompson were pla were orbiting around the sun which is unlike what jj thompson had initially said and this is how he envisioned is the atom to look like so the electrons were moving around the orbits and then there was a nucleus with a positive um charge inside the nucleus and then came Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr is the one who now talked about the orbits and he specified them to be um, energy levels or yeah and energy levels or orbits 
and it talked about that the mass of the atom was majorly concentrated in the nucleus, the nucleus that contained protons, and that the electrons were arranged in energy levels or shells, and this energy shell used to fill one at a time. When one shell is filled, it is to move to the next shell, forming the new term which was referred to as electronic configuration. So he's the first person who mentioned on the electronic configuration. So and he said that the atoms that had full shells were not that reactive, and electrons were the ones that determined the reactivity of an atom. So, and then came in uh, James Chadwick. So James Chadwick was the first person to discover the neutron uh, in the nucleus. So in the previous scientist talked about a positive um, charge in the nucleus, but they were not able also to discover the neutron. But James Chadwick did experiments and was able to discover the neutron. And he discovered that it did not have any charge, although it usually made up the total mass of the atom. So it came along with the positively charged protons in the nucleus. So the nucleus now had protons from the pre previous scientists and the neutron that was discovered by James Chadwick. So the protons were the ones that are, were positively charged and the neutrons were, did not have any charge at all. And so this brings us, of course, there were may, many more discoveries that happened or improving on those theories that were discussed by these scientists. And this brings us to the definition of the modern day atom. So the atom is the smallest particle of an element uh, that can take part in a chemical reaction. So an atom is made up of different parts. We have the nucleus and we have the energy level. So we have the inner parts and we have the outer parts. So as you can see on the diagram, we have the nucleus and we have the energy shells. So the nucleus is made up of two particles. We have the positively charged part, which is referred to as the protons, and we have the neutrons that are, do not have any charge at all. So when you look at the nu neutrons of a certain atom, all atoms usually contain them. And the only exception is with hydrogen that does not have any neutrons. So when protons and neutrons are together, they are also they are also referred to as nucleons. So that is a sample of a diagram that is used to show um, the atom and the nucleus, and you can see the electrons are orbiting around the nucleus. So the next thing is the energy levels. These are the ones that contain electrons, as you can see. They are also referred to as orbits or shells, and they usually, the electrons are so small and they're always moving fast. As you can see in the image above, they're not uh, stagnant or constantly placed in a certain location. They're always, they're always in a constant movement. So the energy level is the one that is used to represent where electrons are mostly found. Although we usually present them in, in a like in a constant uh, state, it does not mean that they are constant. They are always moving about. So the subatomic particles or particles in the atom are the protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons are positively charged, and they are found in the nucleus. The number of protons in the nucleus is equal to the number of electrons. Just remember that. The number of protons and the number of electrons are always the same. That is the reason why it is referred to as electrically neutral. And then we have neutrons. Neutrons are neutrally charged. They do not have any charge. They are usually found in the nucleus of the atom. And um, 
They usually thought to prevent the positive charged proton from getting close to each other because we know uh, like charges uh, will repel. So we do not want that to happen. So some of the scientists discussed and they thought the neutrons were purpose was to prevent that from happening. And then we have the electrons. So the electrons are negatively charged and they are found in the energy levels. So as we said earlier on, the number of electrons are always equal to the number of protons in the nucleus. That is the reason why we call it electrically neutral. That is for a neutral atom, the atom that has not lost or gained any electrons. So if we look at a summary of what we have discussed, so we were able, the scientists were able to discover particles in the atom. We have the protons, which have a relative mass of one and neutrons which have also a mass of one they are placed in the nucleus or um, uh, they are also referred to as a form part of the nucleon so they're in the nucleus so protons are positively charged neutrons are do not have any charge the electron is the smallest it's found on the outer parts of the nucleus in shells or energy levels it is negatively charged and it has a very small uh, mass. That is why most of the mass of the atom is um, uh, known to be in the center of the nucleus because of the weight of the proton and the weight of the neutron. So let's do a few questions on what we have discussed. So name a scientist involved in the development of the atomic theory. Describe their contribution to the theory. So you can pick any scientist. Uh, so one of the scientists we looked at is um, JJ Thompson. So we said that JJ Thompson discovered the electron and discovered that the electron was negatively charged. And we also can mention um, James Chadwick. Uh, James Chadwick discovered the neutron. These were some of the major scientists who discovered some major parts of the atom. So also the other scientists that we mentioned in the beginning of the session, make sure you can go back and check on that. So going to the next question, study and fill the table below based on the atomic theory. So we have the electron. We said electron has a charge of 1 over 1850. It's very small. And it's located on the outside of the nucleus. Outside of the nucleus. Or you can say it's located on the shells, on the energy shells. And then we have a particle that is positively charged. We say that the particle that is positively charged is a proton. And it has a mass of 1. Um, so I placed this on the wrong place. The charge of the electron is negative 1. Sorry about that. And the proton is located inside the nucleus. And then finally, we have another particle in the nucleus, which we'll call the neutron. It has a charge of zero and a mass of one. So you can see how the table has been filled. I hope you have been able to understand the theories. You can go uh, further and study more. You can watch out for the notes as well and see this contribution on this scientist. So next, we are going to dip uh, further into the structure of the atom and we are going to discover different elements of the atom. See you in the next lesson.